Hello everybody, I'm back. I'm still at Miami International Airport. There's some alarms going off, but I need to get these videos done and posted uh, before we get on the plane to Havana. So, um, I talked a little bit about, you know, how you, whether or not you can go to Havana, how to arrange your paperwork, and now, um, the next things that we considered when we got to this point was, okay, where are we gonna stay? Um, how are we gonna get around? And how are we gonna pay for all of this? So, as far as where we're going to stay, again, Americans are restricted, they're limited in where they can stay in Cuba. Um, as I understand it, we can't stay in people's houses, uh, like in like just a friend's house, um, a relative's house. Um, we can only stay in what are called casas particulares or hosteles, like hostels, and these casas particulares are basically people are have been licensed to host people in their homes. So it's not like anybody could just rent you a room in their house. These places have been licensed. So you need to, so we decided to stay in these casas particulares. Um, I was able to find them with a lot of reviews on Expedia. And Expedia was really great because I could find a place, read a bunch of reviews on it, and then buy it, book it directly through Expedia. So it was paid for and done. I don't have to worry about bringing money with me to pay for that. So casas particulares is what you're looking for and look on Expedia and things like that. Um, so, we can't stay in people's houses if you're, unless you were born in Cuba, and we can't stay in hotels or anything that's owned by the Cuban government or the military. So, Casas Particulares is what you're looking for. Um, so that's where to stay. Now as far as how to get around, we don't know a lot about taxis yet because we haven't been there. Um, one thing I was able to do was to reserve a taxi through my Casa Particular um, in Havana. So. They offered the service of having someone come pick me up for, I think, $35. So uh, that's what we're doing. So other than that, I don't know about the taxis, and I hope that after the trip is over, I'm going to be able to come back to some of these things. Our trip is not just to Havana. We are actually going to go the length of Cuba from Havana all the way down to the far eastern tip to a place called Baracoa, a very remote place. And um, we heard, thought about taking the train, but we heard that the trains break down often, so don't take the trains. We could take a bus um, through a company called Via Azul, which the link is posted below as well, as well as a video on someone who is in Cuba taking uh, Via Azul who really explains how to use it if that's how you decide you want to go. They're cheap and easy and relatively comfortable, although they can have some problems. Um, however, being American and just wanting to have that flexibility, we decided to rent a car. Uh, we rented a car through a company in Canada, so we rented a car, cost us a little over $100, not about $100 a day, which I think is better than it is here in America, but not cheap. Um, it does have unlimited mileage, we'll pick it up in Havana, and we're going to drive, it's going to take us uh, two days to go that 650 miles from Havana to Baracoa, which is like a 10 hour trip in America, but apparently it's a two hour trip. Our other option was a bus, but the bus takes 20 or 21 hours, and we just weren't really feeling that. So I rented a car through uh, Sun Tours in Canada. Um, the owner's man named Renee. He was fabulous, very helpful. He's also Cuban, so he was really good to ask questions of and give us some recommendations. Uh, the link for him is also below. Uh, finally, the last thing is how you're going to pay for all of this. Um, well, you can't use debit cards in Cuba, so even if they have a MasterCard logo. And the rules say you can't even use uh, an American credit card, a Visa or a MasterCard drawn on American bank in Cuba. Um, so you really kind of have to pay in cash. And so and that was another reason I liked the Expedia, um, where I could pay for my hotels or Casa, Casa Particular right then and there. I don't have to bring cash. Uh, the same with renting the car through Canada. I was able to pay for the car rental through the Canadian company on my credit card, no problem. Um, however, we will need cash for other things. And if a currency could be a non grata, the American dollar is currency non grata in Cuba right now. And so you need euros. Euros are your best bet where to go and you do kind of have to bring a bunch with you because ever you can't use a debit card, can't use a credit card, and uh, you can use dollars in some places. You don't want to withdraw money in Cuba. Even if you could, you'll get a really bad exchange rate, like a seriously bad, the official Cuban exchange rate is terrible. And then a lot of places won't even take the Cuban currency. Um, so yeah, that's it. Casas Particulares or Hosteles. Check on Expedia.com. You can take a bus. Oh, you could, I could have flown to Baracoa. I meant to mention that, but the planes are old. 
They're old Soviet planes from the 60s, and I heard horror stories on them, and I decided not to do that. So, but you can fly if you'd like, um, and the bus has the video below with the information, and I think that's it until I get to Havana. Bye.